exemption basically has been uh, in the agriculture technology space for the last two decades now. And uh, we've spent a fair amount of time uh, doing a lot of research um, as far as the agriculture inputs is concerned. We are one of its kind um, in terms of the technology that we have which gets into agriculture, largely driven by microbes and microbial extracts. So we have a very unique proposition in terms of the products that we have because all of it um, you know, is an extract um, of different uh, microbes which I'm sure you're aware microbes are available all over the place. Uh, it's about identifying the microbe, isolating it and finally arriving it at uh, some solution which is good for uh, the agriculture landscape. See, it's very interesting. Actually, if you see it, uh, this year, 2015, has been declared as the International Year of the Soil. And I think it's in the right earnest that this particular interview is being held because United Nations along with Food and Agriculture Organization World Over has declared this year as the International Year of the Soil. And uh, many countries, uh, you know, including um, the developed nations and the upcoming countries have taken a lot of, uh, you know, uh, steps in the right direction in order to ensure that the soil is taken care of and hence directionally um, it's a lot to do with what's going to be the future as far as uh, agriculture and more importantly fertilizers because today if you see the overall numbers fertilizers world over contribute to close to about 260 billion dollars is the size and uh, increasingly it's becoming important because I mean, farmers are actually trying to find solutions for their farms because what's happened is the trend in terms of using synthetic fertilizers across the world has gone up so much that today it's become you know, a problem for a lot of farmers because the excess uh, chemicals in the soil is leading to a lot of land getting fallow number one. Number two, the yields across crops has started to drop. So people have started to, you know, getting worried now what the future is going to look like. Just to give you some numbers, if you look at the population that's growing today, a 30% increase in world population over the next 10 to 20 years, it tantamounts to 70% increase in food consumption. So if one is not fully cognizant of taking you know proper care in terms of what the land and what the soil is going to look like i think it's going to be a huge disaster world over the increase if you see world over the increase is more or less a two percent is the increase year on year but in asia pack and countries like india the increase of fertilizer usage is close to about six to seven percent year on year so if you look at the fertilizer industry i mean if you actually break it up Right, the large portion of it is contributed by the synthetic fertilizers. And typically in fertilizer there are three components. One is the nitrogen, the phosphorus and the potash. Right? Nitrogen, as you know, it's available through naphtha and that's the source. Phosphorus from you know phosphatic salts and potash from mines. These are the synthetic ways of generating. There is another segment in fertilizers which is called as a biofertilizer segment, which is yet to catch up because the world over I think the number is close to over two to one and a half billion dollars is the size, right? Now increasingly countries, especially developed countries, are moving towards using biofertilizers because using them the soil tends to get more you know, important when it comes to agriculture. Now, there's a third segment that we're talking about, which is what you're asking me. We're not in the synthetic, we're not in the complex, we're not in the biofertilizer. We're in a third segment, which is called as natural fertilizer. Now, let me tell you what the difference between a natural fertilizer and a biofertilizer is. Bio, by word, is organic, right? But here, the problem is, in biofertilizers, it's the live microbes which are used as fertilizers, which is good. But the problem there is the live microbes have a shelf life of close to 9 to 10 to 12 months. After that, the microbes tend to, you know, the efficacy tends to vary. And hence, the confidence level when it comes to the farmers is much lower using biofertilizers. If you look at India today, a large portion of biofertilizers is largely being, being, being taken by the government of India through the subsidy and all of that which is given to the farmers, right? We're coming into a third segment which is an extract of a microbe. Now the beauty about an extract of, it's not one microbe, it's a consortium of microbes. That means a microbe which gives you nitrogen directly to the plant. 
In case of biofertilizer, it's a fixating bacteria. That means the bacteria fixes the nitrogen from the soil, okay? Or it solubilizes the potassium and phosphorus from the soil. It fixes the nitrogen from the from the atmosphere, okay? But here, the microbe itself gives you nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium to the extent that the plant requires. So it's a completely different. And as I understand, we are the only one in the world today who's come up with. So it's alarming for people outside India and within India to know, ki, are you sure there's something like this in terms of a product? So we've been working on it over the last six to seven years now. And it's only in the last 18 months that we thought it's important that we, you know, go in for a patent. So 18 months, the patent uh, officers has been doing their trials across the world. And finally, the acceptance of patents has up happened just about 60 days back. And we've gone into the market to announce that we have filed a patent on the NPK, the source being microbes. So there are two kinds of patents which gone in. One is the process patent, a process that is involved and second is the product patent, right? So I think it's a very unique thing that we've done. It's a first of its kind. We're very, very excited about the future in terms of this. See, fertilizer as a subject cannot be restricted to a particular country. The whole world needs fertilizers. And today, increasingly, people are talking about organic food, people are talking about health hazards, people are talking about ecosystem. All of this has started to worry a lot of people, including you and me today. The solution to this is to eradicate something that's synthetic in nature, to get rid of something that is synthetic and use something which is natural. And hence, the word coined is natural fertilizers because it comes from nature. And there are a lot of pros when it comes to, as compared to the you know negative aspects of it. So using natural fertilizers, okay, A, the plant is very, very excited because there's no stress on the plant today, okay. If you see back, okay, excess use of fertilizer, which has happened in most countries, including India, has led the land to remain fallow now. So more and more fertilizer that are used, where does it go? It just goes and, you know, remains in the soil. So the entire microbial count in the soil tends to diminish. So the yield tends to come down. So over a period of time, the farmer has to virtually use that land for real estate more than agriculture, which is happening in India. You look at what's happening in Punjab. You look at most of the areas where, you know, excess use of uh, chemical fertilizer or synthetic fertilizers helped. But now as we go along, the problem is of plenty today. The only solution for this is you start using something which is natural. The plant feels they de-stress completely, the yields are high, and over a period of time, the soil becomes much more, uh, you know, fertile when it comes to a farm. See, as of now, the focus is India as such, okay, since we've just launched it, our first trials would be in a market like Nasik. If you look at India today, again, in terms of fertilizers, there's one which is a granular segment, which is used for broadcast, and the other in a water-soluble segment. I'm not really wanting to cater to the granular as of now because it's highly subsidized as far as India is concerned, okay? So we would let it remain there for some time, okay? The second part of it is the water-soluble fertilizer, which only goes through fertigation. And if you look at India today, 45% of the agriculture land today is irrigated. You still have 65% of which is still dependent on the rains. And hence, every bad monsoon has its own problems when it comes to rains. So we are addressing a segment which is a water-soluble segment. And this goes through fertigation. Now today, let me give you some numbers. Last year, a lakh and 50,000 metric tons was the consumption in India alone only for water-soluble fertilizers, right? All of it. I mean, 100% of it was imported. And more importantly, 100% of it was inorganic, was chemical and synthetic. We are into a replacement segment as far as that is concerned. So our first launch will be water-soluble fertilizers, NPK, which is natural, which is replacing something, A, which is imported, B, which is synthetic in nature, okay? And three is most expensive for the farmer because you still end up paying a lot of dollars in terms of importing, right? So that is the segment that we are catering to. Having said, once we start seeing scale, we also have a lot of discussions happening internationally because internationally people are able to understand what an organic is vis-a-vis -vis and they are will, willing to appreciate what technology is all about. India is still a little too far. Okay? So we are addressing India first to start with. I think over the next two to three seasons from now, we will start seeing how the whole things evolve and then start looking at international as well. who's doing 
natural fertilizers internationally. What they're doing is biofertilizer. Again, biofertilizer today internationally is growing at 3 to 4 percent. Again, they are driven by some bacteria called rhizo, DBM, azotobacter, and all. They are all fixating bacteria. Okay, they're very different from natural fertilizers. They are live bacteria. Mine is not live. Look at clearly the demarcation. But again, that industry is growing high because world over people have started to replace chemicals which are we using this now. While the growth is about 4 to 5 percent, it's about 2 to 1.5 billion dollars plus or minus, that's the kind of business that's there. But the fact of the matter is products like this would be an immediate replacement to all of them once they start to try this. Okay, A, the shelf life is much larger than a biofertilizer. So a biofertilizer again, like I said, after 12 months, you probably don't see any microbe in that bottle today. Okay, when I'm talking about it's a three to five years kind of a shelf life, which is available both in the liquid and in the powder form. So it's the easiest thing for a farmer to apply to. See, Campson Biotechnologies is basically an IPR driven company. So we are basically, we take a lot of pride in saying we are a research and development company more than the commercial aspect. The commercial aspect has only started about three to four years from now. Prior to which we were more into research. So it took us 20 years, that's two decades, to identify close to 32 microbial, 32,000 microbial strains, of which we've shortlisted about four and a half thousand and come up with 40 products. Okay, it took us that much more time to come about. Okay, having said, because that's the DNA that the company carries, we will continue to, you know, work on research because that's what we think we're an expert as far as anybody else is concerned. Okay, I think that's the future. So if I'm an IPR driven company, if I have all of it that goes into a market, it doesn't matter, right? I mean, I would have enough and more buyers who wants to buy it from me. See, I have, very, I have two distinct message, basically. One is, one should realize that microbe is the future. Whether it's agriculture, whether it's pharmaceutical, whether it is, you know, paints, any industry that you take, microbe is the one which is going to change them. B, it's a very asset light. You don't really have to invest too much on technology as far as microbe is concerned. Three, there's a huge, uh, you know, talent as far as India is concerned, you know, as far as research. I think one needs to really channelize their talent in terms of coming up. Today, there are not too much of companies. Look at biotechnology in India. 95 to 96 percent of the spend in biotechnology today is in the pharmaceutical segment okay it's barely four percent that gets into agriculture while you look at countries like us countries like australia and more countries they have so much they've galloped as far as technology is concerned when it comes to biotechnology i think it's a matter of time that india there is a brain drain that's happening so the talented researchers from india go abroad why i think you need to promote a lot more of this in terms of you know it, no, it, it need not be monetary as such when it comes to a company but directionally i think the government needs to also take a lot of interest in terms of wow this is something different you know let's adopt this because today what is it it's all natural i'm not depending on any import okay i mean if microbes are going to drive the entire thing why do you need to even depend on anybody else externally so coming back i think smes needs to be promoted more and more in terms of using some technology which is green which is sustainable as far as agriculture is concerned because i think that's the future i mean if we don't take corrective steps today we're probably glaring at a big problem over a period of time mm -hmm.